Hello and welcome to another jazz session where today we're continuing through our journey of Tales of Berseria. Alright, so where we left off, we just killed the Headless Knight and a lot of people to talk to. So, without, let's just get into it with the expedition first, actually. Nope, nope. Woohoo! Ooh, 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 a bone mask. All right, now it's up. Well, I guess let's go to Force Islands, since that's a new place to go. Okay. Rokuro first. Oh, hey, Velvet. You don't mind if I give Kudogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? Well, I don't uh, know. Duh. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt. To focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. I consumed the block. Well, at least I could be able to make the sword, because I ate it. Have you been practicing your dev impression, Velvet? What? No. Now, now, a performer in Mogilu's menagerie has to be more diligent than that. What if we're stopped at a checkpoint and the guards ask you to perform a trick? If that happens, I'll show them my trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, that would be a sight indeed. But seriously, if you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach just you looking some. into my just soul. 10, gold each. And I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Set. I spy! I spy! Uh, I can't, Kamawana. I I've got stuff to... I spy with my little eye. Something that starts with V. <sighs> okay, I'll try. Uh, is it... Velvet? <laughs> no! No fair! How'd you do it so fast? <laughs> Wait, Kamawana, I'm sorry. You don't have to cry. <laughs> It's a weird child, Komoana. Hmm. What else do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth Pulse points, starting with what the ones in Ward Forest and Polymedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any Therians. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. Yes, ma'am. When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house a Therian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? If you're going to do something, then give it your all. There is no other way to live. R right. I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah. I do. Hey, what do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. From what I can tell, the next closest Earth Pulse point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Aizen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your... It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Uh. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh, Uzfamewu Wexav. Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey, anybody lose a letter? 
Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. It could be one of the pirates. Why don't we go to the docks and ask around? Fine, just don't forget our mission. I'm pretty sure a letter delivery is not going to get in the way. Okay, it's it's strange seeing the different costumes and cutscenes, so I'm just going to go back to her normal style. Hey, Eisen. No reply this time either? Eh, but she's doing okay. I can say that much. That's good to hear. I can rest easy then. Now's about getting that pot wrapped. I've got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. Did. Did what he just say cute? <laughs> <clears throat> Help you with something? Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might be? Obviously it belongs it, to him. You? Wait, it's yours? We didn't read it. Totally Much. didn't read it. <laughs> you really didn't read it? N no, of course not. Put this letter in with the package. Who's got it? When you ship with the Turtles Express, rest assured your mail is in good hands. If you're done here, we're ready to head out. Our destination is Midgand. Yeah, I'm all set. Was he sending a gift to someone? And with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. You think? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know old Reeps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. That's <laughs> racist. <laughs> what, just because he's a pirate, that means he can't write well. Yikes. Better watch what we say from now on. Yeah. Hey, Eisen, is there uh anything we can do about the Prince's Hawk? Griffin, I mean, every day it goes out on these hunts or whatever and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawk's hunt. What's the big deal? Well, yeah. At first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while. But then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber camps and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor sharp bills. What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk. I'd hate to spoil it for him. Yeah. You could just be like, hey, prince, so we Griffin worry that your freaking hawk he is going to drop gigantic fish on the crew. Nice, like, could you tell him to just or... drop it a Grocky? little, like, That's in a different place? Kept calling Griffin. She says she came up with it by combining Griffin and hawk. <sighs> so clever. This is probably the first time in the prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. So what are we going to do? Nothing, really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck! I'm sure even the prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? Like an that elephant. That sounds like a demon to me. Yep, huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? <laughs> oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, don't drop that on the deck. Are you listening to me? Everyone died the end.
Thanks for watching Tales of... Oh, okay. Everyone's dead. Or everyone's alive. Hey, Grimoire. What you doing? May I ask you a question? What? You're an Earth Moloch, yes? Why live on the sea when your kind sinks in water? I live on the sea because I'm an Earth Moloch. I'd be curious to hear more. Eifried used to go on about how we should accept what we were born with. But one time he joked about the idea of a pirate who couldn't swim. And he laughed and laughed. I wanted to clobber him right then and there. But it wouldn't have changed the fact that I can't swim. I didn't want some predestined elemental affinity to control who I was. Instead, I underwent yeah, tough don't training let that to elemental it. affinity well, I guess define that's one way to your lifestyle. It. Did this training of yours bear any fruit? Well, as soon as I stepped into a Don't river, let Moloch society tell you what to do, man. And swallowed me up. Then, when I tried going into a lake, the seaweed suddenly multiplied and tangled around my body, nearly drowning me. And then, finally, when I tried jumping into the ocean, a huge whirlpool formed with me at its very center. Huh. The Reaper's curse at play? As far as I'm concerned, my Earth affinity and my Reaper's curse aren't much different. And that they've both shackled me since I came into being. This is about pushing and challenging the constraints I was born with. Hmm. So, did you eventually learn how to swim? Pretty much, yeah. As long as I never let go of my portable life preserver. <laughs> oh. So you know how to float. Time to go to freaking Midgand. We have arrived. Hmm? The boss has given me a message for you. Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains to the east of Logris. She thought it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sent. Give Tabitha our thanks. Don't tell him what you know. Looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends either. There That's are means to an the end. Underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust a us? A sexy we don't poison show them hat. Trust kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right. We hardly know the first thing about them, and yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back. But only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the Underworld. That sounds terrible. 
But at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> Can't argue that. There is no evil food. Okay, I'm gonna skip forward a little bit to where we are where we need to be. <laughs> oh no, the tornado still Oh, it's a dragon. Tornado dragon. Dragon. Gotta be the demon Tabitha wanted us to know about. It's flying free, but could it still be a Therian? I just felt an Earth Pulse point. It's that way, somewhere near the top of that mountain. Let's check it out. Some new enemies to fight. So many explosions. That may be Artorias, but whatever. We'll find out about that later in the game. Is this how we get to the top of the mountain? Oh, that's a big area. But yes, I do think this is how we get to the top of the mountain. At least over here. Stay away from me, wasp. Feel the earth pulse now. It's up above. Guess we're in for some mountain climbing then. Toast my goats. Toast my oats. Let's go. Oh. Star point. Let's go blindly see what it Here. is. This is the Earth Pulse point I've been feeling. No Therian and no barrier. I must have gotten it wrong again. I wouldn't be so sure of that. That dragon could well have broken its barrier. Or it might have been too powerful for the Abbey to subdue. You could be right. After all, dragons make for the strongest demons. The problem is, we don't know if it's a Therian or not. Yeah. Let's stick with the plan and head to Stonebury to gather more information. <sighs> 
Am I the only one here who thinks the real problem is how we're supposed to fight a frickin' dragon? No, pretty sure you're not the only one thinking that. But, okay, so... That was a little anticlimactic, and I hate to end the episode like that. But, we're gonna open this treasure chest, then we're gonna end the episode. So, we'll pick up... Sorry, I just had a massive brain fart there. Uh, <laughs> I completely went blank. But anyway, so we're gonna pick up Tales of Berseria during our next jazz session. Thanks a lot.